chapter 4 air in this chapter we'll be discussing about what is atmosphere what are the different layers in the atmosphere what is the composition of air and how does the wind travel what is the temperature what are the different types of wind patterns these all we'll try to discuss in this chapter first what is atmosphere the blanket of air which surrounds the entire earth is known as atmosphere the entire air on this planet together is called atmosphere atmosphere consists of the gases which we require for us to breathe so without air we cannot survive on this planet so air plays a very vital role in every human's life so we need atmosphere at any cost without atmosphere we are not there and coming to the next one what is the composition of air what is surrounding the entire planet the air composed is a consisting of nitrogen oxygen argon carbon dioxide and all the other gases the maximum chunk is held by nitrogen which is 78 percent which is very very useful for the plants to grow but at the same time plants cannot take the nitrogen directly the soil which absorbs the nitrogen converts them and from soil the plants take it the animals and the plants convert that which are under the soil then only the plants can take it coming to the oxygen as we all know oxygen is very important for every human to survive because we breathe in oxygen so next the major part is shared by oxygen then we have carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is shared is used by the plants when they are doing the process of photosynthesis they take carbon dioxide and release oxygen that time so there is a perfect balance between the usage of carbon dioxide and oxygen which balances for us then the other gases are argon neon krypton xenon all together we have less than one percent so this is the combination of the atmosphere air the air consists of nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, helium, krypton, xenon, all together gases resulting in 100%. Major share is by the nitrogen, then the carbon dioxide, sorry, then the oxygen followed by carbon dioxide and the other gases. Now coming to the structure of the atmosphere, how the structure of the atmosphere is present around the earth, from the earth till how many kilometers we have the atmosphere first it is divided into five layers first layer the troposphere second layer the stratosphere third layer the mesosphere fourth layer the thermosphere and the fifth layer the exosphere so in the first layer it is from 0 kilometers to 13 kilometers the entire rainfall precipitation fog hail snow everything happen in this layer only so this is the one of the important layers for the mankind then moving to the second layer the second layer as i mentioned it is stratosphere the stratosphere is extended up to 50 kilometers and here the aeroplanes travel in this layer the second important thing is ozone layer is present in the stratosphere only ozone layer is a layer which protects us from the harmful sun rays which protects the human from the ultraviolet rays which are released from the sun rays directly falling on the human mankind. It protects us from that and safeguards us. Coming to the third layer that is the mesosphere. Mesosphere is extended up to 80 kilometers and here the meteoroids as soon as they enter into the third layer that is the mesosphere they burn up themselves. So here the important thing is meteoroids get burned themselves. Fourth layer is the thermosphere the thermosphere is a place where extending from 80 to 400 kilometers and it consists of the radioactive elements the radio transmission the radio waves can be transmitted back through this layer only that's how we are able to listen the radio fms and all these channels because of transmission of happening through this thermosphere and coming to the last layer that is the exosphere exosphere is the last layer and the very light layer very thin layer from here the helium 
and the hydrogen start to get released into the outer space so the structure of the atmosphere consists of five important layers the first one the thermosphere second one the stratosphere third one the mesosphere fourth one the thermosphere and fifth one the exosphere in the first one it is up to 13 kilometers second is up to 50 kilometers third is up to 80 fourth from 80 to 400 and the beyond that we have the exosphere these are the important layers of the atmosphere so atmosphere is a blanket of air which is surrounding the entire planet it is composed of nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide argon and the, all the other gases major chunk is for nitrogen followed by oxygen and carbon dioxide and argon and it is having a structure of five layers as we discussed till now so this is about the atmosphere atmosphere is one of the important layers and this is one of the important essential element for every human to survive on this planet now let us now learn about weather and climate what is weather what is climate weather is the atmospheric condition of a place for a very short period of time that can be from 6 hours to 24 hours or 48 hours so the weather is a condition of a place or the state of the atmosphere whether it can be cold it can be hot it can be rainy it can be windy it can be sunny all these conditions come for the explanation of the word called weather but the same type of condition is present for over three months or six months then we call it as the climate of a place climate is the weather condition of a place for a long period of time or the state of atmosphere for a very long period of time that is climate so weather the state of atmospheric condition for a very short period of time while climate the state of the atmospheric condition for a very long period of time generally they study for 30 years a place and they determine the weather of a place and the climate of a place now moving into the details what is temperature how is it connected with the concept of air weather and climate today it is a hot sunny day it's a windy day it's a rainy day so when this weather is described of an area or a place we also mention the temperature of the place if it is hot what is the degree of that is a temperature if it is cold how much is the temperature so the relative coldness or the hotness of the place is expressed in degrees or celsius is known as temperature so the temperatures vary again with the sun rays that is the sun rays fall directly on the earth the sun rays coming from sun to the earth is called incoming solar radiation the sun rays received by the planet earth from the sun is called incoming solar radiation so the incoming solar radiation is also known as insulation so the insulation is very high near the equatorial part as you move away from the equator towards the poles the temperatures reduce gradually because the sun rays have to travel long distance to reach the regions from the equator towards the poles at the equator they fall directly on the land but as we move towards the poles there is a lot of atmosphere present there is a lot of disturbance for the sun rays so they get distracted and they get diverted and also the intensity of the heat the relative heatness of the sun rays also gets reduced as they move towards the poles that's why the temperatures vary from the equatorial region to the tropical or sorry the polar regions and coming to the air pressure what is air pressure air pressure means air exerting some amount of pressure on the surface of the earth how can we know this one if air is expressing or exerting some amount of pressure on the earth surface why are we not feeling this one? why the humans don't feel the pressure of the air at any time the pressure is exerted equally from all directions on the human body the human body reflects it with a counter pressure so 
we don't feel at all much because the same pressure is reflected from all sides so you don't need to move and counter pressure is released from your body that's why we have like this and the air pressure also varies from high pressure to low pressure the areas which are extremely hot will have very low pressure the areas which are cold will have very high pressure so now the air always moves from high pressure areas to low pressure areas if you look at the major pressure belts of the world it is in the polar regions we have the major pressure the high pressure belts and in the sub polar regions we have low pressure so the winds travel from high pressure polar region to subtropical or subpolar low pressure regions so in the similar way near the equator we have low pressure just from the regions above from the equator there is a trop temperate regions we have high pressures so from high pressure the winds go towards the equator in the southern hemisphere they go towards the upwards while in the northern hemisphere they go towards the southwards like this everywhere the wind always travels from high pressure areas to low pressure areas coming to the concept of wind what is wind the moving of air is known as wind air moves constantly this moving of air from one place to another place is called wind and it moves in different different directions in different different places it moves differently so it is called with different names in different scenarios different system we have broadly categorized the winds into three different categories permanent winds seasonal winds local winds permanent winds are the winds which are permanent there like the prevailing winds horse winds all the winds which are present permanently whole across the year are known as permanent winds they are present for the whole year coming to seasonal winds they are present as the name suggest only during a particular season let us take monsoon winds only during the monsoon season only you get these winds that's why they are called monsoon winds or seasonal winds coming to the local winds the influence of these winds is felt only in that area not in all the areas the local it is localized like for example desert you get heavy winds or near by to the coastal areas you get winds not in all the places of the state or the country so like this winds can be categorized into three major categories that is permanent winds which are present permanently for the whole year and across the all the regions seasonal winds only during a particular season they does this local winds local winds are done only for the local regions like this we have different types of winds a cyclone nature's fury let us do a case study on one of the cyclones which has hit the state of orissa during 1999 october what happened how do we study the analysis of the cyclones from where did it start and then learn the concepts of moisture humidity precipitation different types of rainfalls just in brief so to give an idea for you first let us see here it is in the state of odisha on the eastern coast a cyclone hit on 17th and 18th of october 1999 within a gap of 10 days one more cyclone the super cyclone hit on 29th of october 1999 the initial cyclone has caused rains and left its impact affecting millions of people the immediate cyclone which came on 29th of october led a vast devastating effect on the people so how do we calculate or how do we understand the phenomenon of the cyclone it can be broadly categorized into three parts the wind velocity what is the speed of the wind during that day during that time the wind velocity was 260 km per hour and this velocity remained for the wind for the next 36 hours when the cyclone was on impact the rain heavy rains were caused for 3 days due to this wind velocity and due to the cyclone's influence tidal surge the tides near the sea started to wave up to 20 km into the land and created lot of disturbance for the coastal area people to survive and also 
for the fields which are nearby to the coastal areas. And from where did this start, this cyclone? As this is located on the eastern coast of India, so the Bay of Bengal influence can be seen. So the Gulf of Thailand, where the initially the depression has been caused, and it moved towards the northern region, northeastern part, and then it reached to the Arasma and Baik Balkundi of Orissa region, Orissa state, where 28 coastal areas were felt this impact, or the impact was felt on these 28 coastal areas, and 13 million people suffered due to this cyclone. Now, coming to the concept of understanding the cyclone, cyclone is a natural phenomena which cannot be stopped. In cyclone, we heard the words of rain, we heard the words of wind. We discussed about the different kinds of winds. But let us now learn about the rain. A rain, moisture, the presence of water vapor in the air leads to moisture. And the presence of moisture on that day at any given time, at any given place is called humidity of the place. The presence of water vapor on the place at any given time is called humidity and the humidity results to get evaporated. So the water when it gets heated up, it gets evaporated. Once it gets evaporated, water gets transformed into water vapor. These water vapors move towards the clouds and when once they reach the clouds, the temperatures reduce. Because as we move above from the land, the temperatures fall down. That is 165 meters above from the land, 1 degree temperature falls down. So, here as the water vapor is going upwards, the temperatures reduce and these clouds are the homes of these small tiny droplets of water, which the water vapor got transformed into water with the reduction of the temperatures. So, this causes the rains for us. There are different types of phenomena, but the entire water getting heated to again getting converted back into the droplets of water and causing rains is called precipitation, which results in the formation of rain. If there is a drop pour of in the form of water, it is called rain. If it is in the form of snow or hail or storm, like that we have different forms of precipitations releasing their water vapor or the snow downwards. Basing on the type of the rain it is causing, it can be called as convectional rain, relief rain or the cyclonic rain. Convectional rain means the general process, how it gets heated up, then goes into the air, then gets cooled, then it falls down. Relief rain is something when the winds are traveling, if they are objected by a hill or a mountain, they go upwards and as they are moving upwards, they go towards the upper elevation and as I mentioned, when we go upwards, the temperatures will fall down. So the wind which is carrying water vapor also with that will get converted into water and it causes rains there. And coming to the third one, the cyclonic rainfall, cyclonic rainfall due to the depressions in the uh, seas or the oceans, the lot of pressure is get builded up over the region and it starts to carry that pressure from that high pressure, the winds start to move towards the lands and cause the heavy rains that are known as cyclonic rains. So here the cyclones will feel the cyclonic rains because there is a lot of pressure. As I mentioned earlier in the case study, the wind velocity is 260 kilometers per hour and it is there for 36 hours. That's why you can see here for the next three days, once the cyclone has impacted the region, we can see heavy rains in this region and even the tides start to surge up to 20 kilometers and the common man's life has started to become very difficult in the coastal areas. So in this chapter we discussed about what is the atmosphere, what are the air pressure belts, what are different types of rainfall, what is pressure, what is humidity, what is air pressure, all these concepts are covered so that it gets an idea for you people. That's all we have in this chapter. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.